Hello there everybody, Dan Calloway here and uh, coming at you again from the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today I want to show you a new um, hobby I have, a new toy basically, and it's not really a toy. Uh, it's a uh, computer uh, circuit board uh, that's it's a very powerful computer actually. It's a quad core uh, CPU uh, running at 1.45 gigahertz uh, with uh, 32 gigs of RAM in an SD card and it's called a Raspberry Pi so let me uh, go ahead and show that to you let me bring up the picture of the one I have and this is my Raspberry Pi um, I acquired this not too long ago from a friend uh, here's the Pi itself uh, in a case and it's actually got a sensor board on top of it so it's called a hat uh, for those who are in the know for Raspberry Pis. Um, underneath this particular circuit card is the main board uh, and the main board has the CPU the, uh, and all the components that you see here uh, integrated into the, um, into the board itself. It also has a heat sink, no fan, but it has a heat sink. Uh, and it's running uh, Raspbian OS, which is a uh, derivative or derivation, if you will, of Debian Linux um, created uh, specifically for the Raspberry Pi. So what you see here is has uh, four USB 2.0, unfortunately not 3.0, but 2.0 uh, ports. It has a gigabit Ethernet port here for wired connectivity, which I have connected uh, to my router. And on the side it has an HDMI cable and an SD card slot. Okay, um, and the power. This is power here. SD uh, SD card slots actually on the other side. You can't see it, but uh, anyway. And here is a port for audio, so you can put a regular audio jack in there as well. Um, this particular device that you see here is a connectivity to the um, a regular computer, uh, my laptop, or uh, even my Windows 10 Pro Tower. Uh, there's a slot in the side for the SD card, so I can use that to download uh, using noobs or some other form uh, that I've choose uh, another operating system for this Pi, uh, and I can slick, stick the slot, uh, the SD card into the slot here, and uh, it'll actually uh, download uh, that particular uh, operating system onto the card, and then I can put it into the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> So I have that as well. And then this is the power supply uh, for the Raspberry and see the connectors on the end here. Um, so what I did and, uh, basically is I connected the Pi up to uh, Ethernet and then I connected my uh, monitor's HDMI cable to this particular port here, got into the Pi, um, made sure that the VNC server uh, was running. Uh, so I launched the VNC server on the Pi uh, after the uh, operating system and everything was installed. And then I disconnected, or I actually uh, acquired a, uh, an IPv4 address using DHCP running on the router. Uh, and, and when I got the IPv4 address for the Pi, which was uh, 192.168.1.95, I then disconnected the HDMI cable and I haven't reconnected it. Uh, I think maybe I'd have to once when I shut it down. But if I reboot the Pi and do not um, shut down the Pi, um, I really don't need to reconnect the HDMI cable so I can see what I'm doing. But if I do happen to shut the Pi down, uh, I don't have to even do that. All I have to do is, I know its IP address, unless it changes, it's not statically assigned. It uh, should be that uh, 192.168.195, and so I can just go out on my browser on the Windows 10 Pro, and I can... Uh, reacquire it and I'll show you how to do that okay so this is my Raspberry Pi this is my uh, my toy basically I'm working with right now but uh, actually I'm I'm doing some things with it uh, it's a hobby uh, and I'm running Node Red on it and that's another video uh, Node Red allows you to uh, wire uh, particular nodes together and create uh, functionality which I will show you in a, free, in a subsequent video uh, some other time um, and it's it's a neat thing. It's really, um, like I said, it's it's not really a toy. This is a full blown computer. It's actually more powerful uh, than my uh, laptop is, and uh, my laptop's not that old. 
Okay, so let me go ahead and close this down and close this down as well. Back on my Windows 10 Pro machine now. Here's the VNC server. Now this is how I get into the Pi. And so what I do is I double click on the VNC server and it brings up this VNC viewer interface. Now I've got VNC server running on the Pi and I need VNC viewer uh, installed on any device that I want to connect to the Pi from. Um, it, since it's on the network at an address that's in the network, uh, my home network, then I can acquire it, I can ping it, etc, etc. Alright, so to, uh, before I get into it though, I want to show you if I get into uh, command prompt here, and so let me do uh, CMD and uh, bring up the uh, command prompt. If I do a ping of 192.168.1.95, I should get a successful ping. And I am. I'm getting three replies, um, four packets sent, four received, zero loss. So I'm actually communicating with the Pi right now over my Windows 10 Pro machine, over the network, by uh, pinging it. So I know I've got a good connection to my Pi. So let me go ahead and uh, close this down. And uh, let's double click on here. And here we go. I'm in the Pi now. And so this is my. Um, interface here. I'm actually uh, looking at the desktop of the Raspberry Pi itself. Alright, so here's the, uh, this is running as I said, Raspbian OS, which is uh, a derivative of Debian Linux. Uh, I've got a few things I've installed on here. Uh, if I go over here to the menu, um, I can show you my preferences. Uh, which is add remove software, uh, appearance settings, audio device settings, uh, display settings, keyboard and mouse, main menu. Uh, here are the package sources. Here's the Raspberry Pi configuration. Uh, recommended software, theme and appearances, uh, theme and appearance settings. And so right now I've got it on Pi X as my theme. Uh, the icon theme I have is Pi X as well. Um, font I have set up for anti-aliasing and uh, hinting as, as well. Full RGB. Okay. Um, and then and that's about it. That's all I wanted to show you there. Okay. So let's get back into the menu. If you go up to programming, you've got Gary, you've got Julia. Here's Node Red, and I'm not going to launch that today. Python 3 programming. It's currently idle. Um, and uh, the IDLE is the interface uh, for Python 3. It's the integrated desktop uh, environment. I've got the SenseHad emulator. I've got Sonic Pi and then uh, Tommy Python IDE. For uh, education, I've got the Smart Sim. Uh, Internet, I've got Firefox ESR, which is the uh, uh, enhanced security version. I've got GFTP. If I launch that, this is my GNOME FTP transfer protocol um, application. If I click on this button here, put in my password, then I can uh, connect to my uh, six terabyte um, personal cloud at home. It's under my administration, under my control, and so I never have to get a Dropbox account or anything like that. I've got uh, uh, all the network storage I'll ever need in six terabytes. And so this is all of my stuff here. Um, this is my username, Dan Calloway. If I go into the public side here, I've got shared documents, music, pictures that I share with my friends and family. Uh, if I get into shared pictures, I've got a whole host of things here uh, that I have. Um, and I can download those directly to the Pi using this FTP client. So it's a very nice thing to have. Let's see if I want to take the big wave uh, JPEG file here and I want to go over and put it down onto the Pi. I can come down here to the pictures directory. Double click it. This is the stuff that I already have here. And this is the big wave uh, JPEG. I just hit this button there and there it is. Okay, so it's already down on the Pi now uh, from my uh, six terabyte personal cloud. So I love this uh, GNOME FTP client that I have. And I love my Pi too. Uh, and I love my uh, personal cloud. It's a Western Digital personal cloud. I've had it now for almost four years. It's still working like a top. So let me go ahead and shut that down. Okay, let's get back in here to the menu. And in the graphics side, 
Uh, I've got uh, Image Magic and Image Viewer games. I've got Minecraft Pi. Uh, for other here, I've got the VNC server that I told you about. Uh, for system tools, I've got HTOP. I'm going to go ahead and launch HTOP here and uh, bring it up to full screen. And you can see here that I'm using uh, only 212 megs of a 1 gig memory. This only has a 1 gig memory uh, capability uh, of RAM, but with this uh, Debian uh, operating system, which is Raspbian OS, you don't need more than a gig. It runs very well on a gig of RAM. I've got 52 tasks running, 63 uh, threads, uh, two running actually, one running now, but 52 set up in the system. The load averages are really good. Uh, anything under one is perfect here, 0.38, 0 0.37, and 0.32. Actually, that's not true what I just said. I've got a quad core system here, so this could go up as high as four and still be just fine, uh, one for every core. And so now the load averages on, on the Pi are perfect here. They're very good. This Pi has been up and running here for 19 hours, uh, 31 minutes, and 15 seconds. I haven't shut it down in almost a day. I did have to reboot it yesterday, so that's why it's not only 19 hours. I intend to leave this thing running 24-7 and not shut it down. I, there's no need to. Uh, the temperatures on the Pi uh, rarely get above uh, 60. Right now, you can look down here where the arrow is. Uh, it's 60, 61 uh, degrees Celsius, and uh, this Pi does not get into danger unless it gets above uh, 80 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, so if I start doing some intensive stuff, it will rise, but it never has gotten above 80. If it gets above 80 with the heat sink, it's not likely to happen, but if it gets above 80, then it'll, uh, the only thing it'll do is it'll go into protection mode, the CPU will back down from 1.45 gigahertz down to 1.2, and it'll be fine. But don't see that happening. Uh, like I said, it, it doesn't get above 75 or 76 at the most so far. Okay, let me go ahead and close this out. And let me get into a terminal. And this is the Raspbian uh, Pi terminal. The host name here uh, on my Pi, I uh, changed the name to Raspi 3B+. Plus. Okay, let me do a uname and R switch, and you can see that I'm running the kernel version, the 4.14.98 version 7 plus for the Pi, which is very nice. Uh, if I uh, do an update here for my Pi, I can do sudo apt get update to update all the repos. And this is Debian, so I'm having to use apt get. All right, and so it went ahead and updated that. So now if I do uh, sudo apt-get upgrade, it's going to go out and see if there are any updates here for the Pi itself. I don't think there will be any, but there it may be. I haven't updated. Yeah, there is one. Um, RPD PLY M splash. I have no idea what that is. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to update it. And uh, so this Pi works pretty fast, actually. I'm very happy with it. Okay, and so let me clear the screen. I do CLEIR in the Pi for Debian Linux. Uh, if I do a DF human readable here, uh, you can see that um, for the root system here, I'm only using 18%, and for boot, 31%. So I'm, I've got a lot of room left here uh, on the Pi itself. Um, and it's 32 gigs, so uh, I've got a lot of space uh, that I can use here on the Pi. Um, let me go ahead and uh, exit out of here, close that out. Let's get into the uh, web browser. I'll show you how, how that works. Well, with system tools, uh, I stopped at HTOP. Let me finish that first. Um, Got HTOP, let me get back in here. Uh, software install, terminal emulator, UX term and X term. For accessories, I've got archiver, calculator, file manager, PDF viewer, SD card copier, shutter, which is a screenshot uh, application or package, task manager, terminal, and text editor. Uh, for preferences, I've got add, remove software, which, which in the Arch world is PAMEC. I'm not sure what Debian calls it. Um, appearance settings, uh, audio device settings, display settings, keyboard and mouse, 
main menu, package sources, Raspberry Pi configuration, recommended software, and theme and appearance settings. And then I can run here. I can do a shutdown if I want, and do a shutdown, reboot, or log off. All right, so let's get into the internet, and let's go over to Firefox um, enhanced security release or extended security release, I believe it's called. All right, so it's bringing up the uh, Firefox web browser now. And it's only got a gig of RAM, so it does take a little bit longer than you might, you know, expect to see on a regular computer, but um, I'm happy with the with the Pi, with the, with the gig of RAM. Okay, so here we are. And so let me go into Facebook. And um, click on that and bring that up. Hopefully my account is logged in here. If not, I'll have to log it in, but I think it is logged in. Nope. All right, so I'm going to have to do that. So let me do that real quick. And password. Should be able to get in here with no problem, hopefully. It's connecting now. All right, so um, I'm getting into uh, Facebook on the uh, Firefox web browser ESR. Um, let me get into the Linux Unix tech channel. Let's click on that. This is my uh, channel up here on Facebook. Got a, um, a site here, a group, if you want to call, call it uh, on Facebook called Linux Unix tech channel. I've also got a YouTube Linux Unix tech channel. That's where I'm coming from now. Uh, and I'm happy with both of those. They're doing, doing well. All right, so uh, as soon as we get in here, I'll probably go ahead, and, go ahead and close this down and finish the video. I just wanted to show you my Raspberry Pi, show you what I'm what I'm doing with it, uh, the fact that I'm able to get into it without any problem. Um, and uh, Facebook is a little slow even on my laptop sometimes, so I'm not not really concerned about that. All right, so here's the uh, here's the Linux Unix Tech Channel on Facebook. There's my group. My members, I got 26 members in there so far. Okay, so uh, this has been a quick video. I wanted to show off my Raspberry Pi. And uh, other than File Manager, which I didn't show you, this is File Manager. Um, and I'm not really sure what it calls it, to be honest. And um, I don't see any help about, so I'm not going to worry about it. But this is uh, File Manager, and I can get into you know anything I need to get into here. Um, on the system. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, you guys have a nice day. Bye-bye.